Hello and welcome to this video about debugging electronic reporting data sources. My name is Albin Lotrich and I am Senior Technical Consultant at Docentric. I'm also the author of some other video and written articles on electronic reporting and other topics on the Centric blog, so you can check them out there if you're interested. In today's video, I will show you how to figure out why the electronic reporting configurations are not giving you correct results by using the electronic reporting debugger. I will start with the explanation of a scenario and then continue by running the reports and using the debugger when the data will not be correct. At the end, I'll give you some final thoughts and wrap up this presentation. Let me explain the scenario I'm using in this video. I use customized configurations that my colleague Wilko Yenko and I created at the Dynamics Mind conference. This was a community conference with over 600 attendees from all over the world, organized by the Centric in May 2023 in Porto Roche, a beautiful city on the Slovenian Adriatic coast. We customized the standard purchase order configurable business document and added terms of payment in the purchase order header and item image on the order lines in our derived configurations as needed. In my demo, I will do two purchase order confirmations on the same purchase order so that I will get two purchase order versions. Each confirmation will have different payment terms. I will then verify if I get correct results on the report and use the debugger as needed to achieve that. So let us see all that in a demo. Okay, let me now go to print management. And here I will make sure that I'm running my format. Uh, currently I'm running the SSRS report, so let me select my Excel Dynamics Minds format configuration so that we're going to be running this one. Okay, that's what we needed here. And right now we can just go ahead and run the report. Go to our purchase order and we'll now find a report that is approved and open. Uh, 48 seems good. So let's quickly run the pro forma confirmation. And before that, let's check out what payment terms do we have. Okay, net 30. Let's do the pro forma confirmation. Uh, everything is set. Okay, so here we see we get the pictures and the images, and we also get the terms of payment. Terms of payment, the first information is ID, the next one is the description. So that is okay. Now I'm going to do my first confirmation with payment terms net 30. Let me do the confirmation. Okay, again, we see basically the same what we have seen before, but this time we already have the entry in the journal and what we have done, we have printed from the journal. We also see that we have got the confirmations. And now I'm going to create a new version by modifying terms of payment and posted it again. Save and I will do another confirmation. Okay, this time net 15 is correctly presented. So that's also okay. And since I have the journal entries already, let me go into the journal and let me now print the first version. As I have uh, said, I have got these two versions and each version is actually saved with the data that were used for that version. So in this first version, I'm using net 30 for payment terms. So let's print this one again. Oops, but here we have mismatch. So we see that the net 30 is correctly read. This is the ID, but the description is not read correctly. 
So now we need to figure out why this data is coming out wrong, and that's where the bugger comes in. In the next step, I'm going to go back to my electronic reporting workspace. Under the configurations, I will set user parameters. And here I already have run settings because I'm using some draft configurations which I want to use. And now I need to activate enable data debugging at format run. This is going to start the debugger. Once I do it, I save it and then I need to refresh it. So that the system is actually using it and I will refresh it here as well just to be sure. And now I have to just go once again. And open it. So now I will be running it again, this time with the debugger. K48 is the one we've been using. Before confirmation, I mean, already confirmations. And now let's run it. Okay, now we will activate the debugger. And here we are first in the format, but we can also then debug format mapping and model mapping. Let's see what the format brings. Here we can drill down where we want to find our data. Document details. Payment ID value. Here we concatenate uh, ID and the description. So let's get value. And on the right, we now drill down again until we get to the data. So this is what we are getting back. And the format configuration doesn't really give us much information. Basically, it just tells us what we get. Let's move to format where we can see what data is in our data model. And here I will find my payments. And I will go to payment term ID first, get value, and drill down to that value on the right. Net 30 is OK. And the description, let me get that value as well. And this one is net 15. So basically, also the format mapping is showing me that already the description is read wrong, which means the problem is happening in model mapping. So in model mapping, I will see what I have there. Here, most of the information is found in variables where I have calculated fields. So purchase order header is where I start. And here I will first uh, go through the relations to come to the purchase order ta purge table. So this is the purchase order table. And here I have the payment information. It's probably enter those terms of payment. Okay, terms of payment, so this is it, get value. And scroll down, net 15. So that's the current value in the purge table. So the last value entered is also saved there. But this is not really what we need. What we need in this case is we need to see the versions. So we need to expand versions. Purge table or version. This is another calculated field, which actually is already taken care that we just see the record that we are currently printing from the available versions. OK, we have expanded that. Now go to relations. And here under relations, we have terms of payment. And description is actually what we need here. And this description is actually net 30 days. So I think I know what the problem is. I'm not reading from the versions. I'm reading from the purge table for the descriptions. So let me confirm that this is true. I will now leave the debugger and I will go back to my configurations and I'll open my model mapping. And in my model mapping, I'm going to verify if what I have said is true. Actually, if I scroll down to payments and if I take a look at the payment term ID, 
I see that I'm actually reading this conditionally. So if it is a pro forma, then it means there are no records in the journal yet, and I'm reading from purchase table. I'm reading payment from purchase table. But in case if I have versions, so the pro forma is no, I need from purchase table or version, so I get payment from there. So this is correctly returning my results, and in the description, I probably have this wrong. Yes, in description, I'm just reading from the purchase table. So that's not OK. I need to fix that. And here I need to add conditional content. I need to select if. And then I need to check if this is pro forma. So on the purchase order header is pro forma add. And since this is quite long, I can replace this part, as you can see, with the add sign. So that I'll do. Then I need to check if this pro forma is yes, but I need to do it through the enums. A data source, yes. OK, if it is pro forma, then it's going to go and read from patch table. If it is not pro forma, it's going to go and read from all versions. So now I have to go to all versions. I expand many to one relations. And here I found terms of payment, terms of payment, and find description, and read it here. So I can now replace purchase order header with the add sign, and check the rest, so version, relations, payment description. Yes, this is good. Just close the parentheses, and we're done. Save. Go back, save, go back, and let's try it again. Let's run it again on the first version, which needs to return net 30. We want to debug. Yeah, we'll just debug the format to see if it came through all right. Header, document details, uh, purge, payment value, get value. Let's see if the value is as expected. Yeah, now we have net 30 and net 30 in the description. So it seems like it's working OK. Now let's run it without debugger to see the end result. OK, we see net 30 for the version 1. So this is OK. Let's do the version 2, which needs to show us net 15. Again, we skip the debugger, hoping that everything is working correctly and that you get correct results. So now it's net 15. And let's also go back and find something that has not yet been posted so that we also make sure that a pro forma is working correctly. Okay, so this one has not been posted. Let's check out which version has it cut. So it's got uh, also net 30. <coughs> Let's go to Proforma, run it, and see if we get net 30 as we should. So this time it reads directly from the purge table. Yeah, it looks all right. OK, so we have seen how to use the debugger. I would also like to show you that you can run free text invoice directly from electronic reporting configurations. And you can't do the same with the purchase order. I will select free text invoice, Excel format, and click Run. As you can see, I can set some filters. And in this case, I set the filter for one free text invoice. When I click OK, the report runs, and I get the result. I will do the same with the purchase order. When I click Run, I can't see any filters, and after I click OK, I get errors. So I'm going to use the debugger to see what is going on.
For the free text invoice, I can see that it reads the data and I can use the debugger to trace it. For the purchase order, the debugger is activated. And when I try to get the data, I can see that nothing is read. And this causes errors when the execution continues. Let's find out what's the difference between free text invoice and purchase order. The answer is in the model mapping configurations. I will show the free text invoice model mapping in one tab and purchase order model mapping in another. You can see that free text invoice uses two user input parameters, purchase order uses none. Free text invoice also uses four table records, purchase order uses none. If I select cast invoice jur in table records and click view, I can see that the ask for query checkbox is selected. When you are using table records, you can filter the records if you activate ask for query checkbox. That is why it is possible to run free text invoice directly. Free text invoice was one of the first reports in electronic reporting, and maybe they were using this approach so that they were able to test it directly from reporting configurations form. Purchase order and most of other reports don't use this approach, and so you cannot run them directly. And now a short summary of what we did today. The introduction of the debugger in electronic reporting was a big step forward in the usability of electronic reporting. Previously, you were left in the dark if you were not getting the values you expected. This video shows you how to use the debugger. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in more electronic reporting content, I invite you to visit the Decentric blog at the link shown in the slide, where you'll find more articles and videos about electronic reporting.